What's up guys, it's Patrick. Today, we're talking about the Atoria Keylab Mark II, and we got a lot to talk about. This is the part two video, so if you missed part one, I unboxed this Keylab, gave you my initial first thoughts, my initial impressions, and if you wanna go back and check out that video, don't worry, I'll link that up for you, but you don't wanna go anywhere yet, because this is the video you wanna see. We're talking features, we're talking functionality, I'm gonna go over all of the great things the Satoria Keylab Mark II has to offer. So now that I've had a couple of days to really get to know this MIDI keyboard, I wanna share with you what I personally think makes this keyboard different from other keyboard controllers that are out on the market. The first thing you'll notice is the quality of this MIDI keyboard. This keyboard is built like a tank. The body is made out of metal as opposed to plastic, which is what you typically get with a lot of MIDI controllers that you find today. All of the controls work and function really well. The drum pads are really nice to play. They're nice and velocity sensitive. And the key bed is Atoria's top of the line synth action key bed that can be found in their top of the line analog synthesizer. The next thing that's really interesting about this Keylab Mark II is the CV connectability. Now I don't have any experience with modular synthesizers, but from my understanding, this keyboard controller can control and interface with modular synthesizers. Again, uncharted territory for me, but it's definitely something that I wanna experiment with in the future. I heard Brian from Atoria describe it this way. Modular synths are to synthesizers what guitar pedals are to guitars. And that really excites me. So when the day comes where I maybe want to start expanding and move away from software synths and towards hardware synths and modular synths, this Aturia Key Lab is going to accommodate my desire for expansion. The included software is also worth talking about because a lot of times these hardware and software bundles usually aren't as good as they seem, but in this case, it's really good. First up, we have Ableton Live Lite. Now this is the introductory version to Ableton Live, which is one of the industry standard digital audio workstations. Personally, I'm a Logic user, but I've been wanting to check out Ableton Live for a little while now, and this is a great opportunity to do so. Next up, we have Piano V, which is Atoria's acoustic piano software suite. A lot of really great piano sounds included in the software suite, so I'm excited to have that. Last, but certainly not least, one of the main things we are here to talk about is Atoria's Analog Lab. As Atoria calls it, this is your vintage keyboard collection. Analog Lab is packed with presets from Atoria's stellar software synth collection. And if you're like me, and you've invested in some of those Atoria synth sounds or vintage keyboard sounds, all of those sounds and presets will integrate right into Analog Lab, making Analog Lab your one-stop shop for all things Atoria vintage keys, synths, sounds. Does that make sense? Don't worry, we are gonna talk a ton about Analog Lab together. Now, lastly, we have the three different modes, Analog Lab, DAW, and User. And this is what makes the workflow that comes from working with this keyboard controller so great. Now, let's start over here with the user setting, and this is the setting that I'm gonna talk the least about just because this is completely customizable. You can do whatever you want, map whatever controls you want. You can control whatever software instrument or analog instrument you want in this setting. Essentially, user mode gives you complete customization of the keyboard controller. All of the controller assignments and parameters can be accessed and edited right here from the front panel on the keyboard controller. If we go over here into our DAW mode, now the keyboard controller functions like a normal keyboard controller. Over here in the knobs and faders section, this will allow you to control your mixer. If you have a big session, you can use the bank feature to move around within your mixer. And because everything over in this portion of the keyboard is dual function, so depending on whether you're in DAW mode or analog lab mode, these knobs and faders do different things. That is clearly labeled for you. So all of the white text corresponds to DAW mode, all of the blue text corresponds to analog lab. And the nice thing is the LEDs on the analog lab and DAW controls will help you remember which colors represent which mode. When first going into DAW mode, you wanna make sure you hold the button down and select which DAW you are working in. So you have Live, Logic, Pro Tools, Cubase, Studio One, and Reaper. I work in Logic, so that's what we're selecting. Then you press the button again and you are good to go. You have your standard transport controls, those are really handy to have. And then over here, this is your DAW commands section, and this is where those magnetic overlays are gonna come into play. So obviously you can see here, I'm using Logic, but each of the overlays are double-sided. So if you are working within multiple DAWs, you will wanna have these uh, magnetic overlays close by. But in DAW mode, the keyboard functions as you would expect. So if you wanna play some drums on your drum pads, you can do that. If you wanna control an electric piano, you can do that.
The center knob here becomes a jog wheel so you can scroll your playhead around your project, which I love. So even though in DAW mode, this keyboard functions as you would expect, I do think some of these controls and features give the workflow just a little boost and I'm always looking for that, so I'm very pleased. So let's move over into the analog lab section of this keyboard controller. And this is the mode that kind of in essence defines this keyboard controller. Over here on the right side of the keyboard, we have nine different controls and this will allow us to select piano, electric piano, organ, pad, bass, lead, sequencer, keys, and then a multi effect. So let me just start by showing you some of the basic functionality of this. And I've got Analog Lab pulled up within Logic so I can show you what that looks like as well. So let's say we're looking for a pad. So we'll select pad. Right away, our pads come up in Analog Lab. So if we go over here to our preset controls, now we can start scrolling between all of the different pad presets. Now, if you remember earlier, I told you that any synth sounds that you already own from Maturia are immediately integrated within Analog Lab. So let me select this Deckard's DX preset. Now this is obviously for the Yamaha DX7. And now you can see right away it loads up the preset and I've got some controls that I can control with my knobs and faders. But the cool thing is, let's say I play it. Okay, it sounds pretty cool, but because I own the DX7 plugin, I can come up here, hover over the DX7, click on this little pencil tool and that'll bring up the full plugin and I can edit all the parameters within the plugin now. Now listen, that is by no means a pitch to try to get you to buy Atoria's synth plugins. I'm just saying if you were like me and you had a few, you will enjoy further customization within Analog Lab and I think that's really cool. Even if you own none of Atoria's instrument plugins, you will still have plenty of presets. I think like over 6,500 presets to work with tons of great sounds. You do not need to spend any more money to make this thing good. It's already great. Now, let's say you're somebody like me and keys aren't exactly your first instrument. Key of C is easy for everybody to play. The transpose function will let you change the key of C to whatever key you want. Let's say you want to play in B flat. Hold down your transpose key, press B flat. Now, We are in the key of B flat, just like that. Listen, I always think that it's in your best interest to learn the instrument, but this is a nice little workaround. It'll help speed up workflow. If you're working on a song and you need to come up with something real quick and, oh shoot, all I know is C major, you could quickly transpose and get by. It's nice. It's a nice little safety net to have. I think the feature's great. Another one of the features that will help you cheat at keyboard is this chord feature. So if you wanna program a whole chord to one note, uh, hold down your chord button, Now we have a major seven for every single note. And we also have a club hit on our hand, so. Over here in the pad section, everything functions as you would expect, but if you trigger chord memory, now we have programmed chords for each pad. So let's check out the multi feature. Now what this does is it allows you to have two presets or sounds playing at once. So if we select multi here, you'll see that in Analog Lab, we get this whole new list of presets. And you can see over on the right, uh, in this piano string ensemble, for example, we have a grand piano and a ARP 2600 synthesizer. Very nice. And you can scroll through and check out some different ones. Ooh, far away pad. Let's see what this sounds like. Ooh, two Matrix 12s. Yeah, not for me. Ooh, travel to heaven. Let's go there together, shall we? Reminds me of uh, the Space Mountain ride at Disney World. Pretty cool. But let's say you go through all the presets, you can't find quite what you're looking for, and you want to build your own. How do we do that? Let me show you. So let's say you want to start with a key sound. So we select keys. And if you notice right over here, when we selected keys, part one was illuminated. Okay? So we go through 
Uh, let's go back to Betty Davis eyes. I love the 80s. What can I say? So we have our key sound. We have the first sound that we want to use. Now we go over here and we select part two. Now we're selecting our part two preset. You can see even the highlighted text has changed from blue to red, which is nice, just so you can, at a glance, know exactly what you're doing. Uh, and let's say we want a pad. We will go and we'll scroll down. Let's find something. How about Deckard's DX? Obviously we're gonna use the Yamaha DX7 here, one of my personal favorites. Ooh, that's really cool. It's really nice. And you could tweak each preset to blend them however you want or adjust the effects. Let's say we wanted a little bit more of the DX7. We'll go over here to our master fader. Give that a little bit more. Well, we'll go back over to part one. We'll take our, we'll take our volume. hear a little bit more of the DX7, it's nice. It's cool. Again, this multi-feature will let you use any two presets, any two sounds that you want. So not only do you get like over 6,500 presets preloaded with Analog Lab, but now you can combine preset sounds. So obviously a ton of customization, you can really create your own unique sounds. And if you find something that you really love and you wanna save it, just press save as, title it whatever you want, dank demo. I think that pretty much sums it up. You can pick kind of uh, your different styles here. Uh, bright, simple, multi, soft, then you just save it. Another cool thing you can do with multi is set a split in the keyboard and program one side of the keyboard to one sound and the other side of the keyboard to another sound. So in order to set a split point, you hold down the live button here and you set your split point. So everything below this C will be the Betty Davis Eyes Prophet 5 sound. And everything above will be the Deckard's DX Yamaha DX7 sound. Again, just like multi, when you're setting a split, you can use any two sounds you want. What more can I say? I'm completely thrilled with this new MIDI keyboard. Like I said, before I even got this key lab, I was a long time Atoria synth user. So to have something that interfaces with some of my favorite plugins and sounds that I use so regularly is really, really nice to have. And listen, I totally understand that this is not a cheap piece of equipment. So hopefully in closing here, I can help you determine if the investment is right for you. First of all, who do I think the key lab Mark II is ideal for? First and foremost, if you are at all invested in the Atoria ecosystem, this is a great key keyboard controller for you because like I said before, all of your pre-existing plugins, your presets, your sounds, your user presets, those will all integrate seamlessly into Analog Lab. If you're a producer and you're looking for a keyboard controller that will speed up your workflow, this is a great option for you. If you're like I was and you're somebody who's looking to upgrade from your entry-level MIDI controller or even just upgrade to something that feels a little bit more professional, this is a great option for you. If you're looking to invest in your first MIDI keyboard and you don't quite know a lot about production or recording yet, maybe this isn't the option for you. Maybe you wanna get something that's a little bit more affordable to start, learn the ropes a little bit, and then come back to the KeyLab. It'll always be here waiting for you. Now the KeyLab 49 is $499. The Keylab 61 is $549. It's a lot of, uh, you know, it's a lot of grilled cheese sandwiches, if you know what I mean. Is it worth the price? Personally, I think the answer is yes. This keyboard controller is everything that I could want. My songwriting and production process centers around the MIDI keyboard quite a bit. I program a lot of beats and do a lot with drum samples, so I love having the pads. I also do a lot with keyboard sounds and synthesizer sounds, and if I'm honest, the only reason I don't use more acoustic piano sounds is because I don't really have 
a plugin that I think sounds good. But now that I have the Piano V collection, that's all changed. So I'm excited to have that. Analog Lab, if you couldn't tell by now, I'm so happy with. This is ideal for me. I mean, Atoria has really become my one-stop shop for all things piano, keyboard, synthesizer, and I'm really, really happy about that. I love how this keyboard controller has enhanced my workflow. When I'm working at my key lab, there are very few times when I need to reach for my computer mouse or my computer keyboard. Everything that I need is right here. And for those of you who write, for those of you who produce, you know that when inspiration strikes, it's like a switch flips. You're right into go mode. Having all of the controls right at your fingertips is a tremendous asset. You're not at the mouse, scrolling through instruments, trying to find a sound, all of your sounds are right here. All of your instruments are right here. Obviously, I know that if you get one of these keyboards, it doesn't mean that you're going to completely forget about all of your other third-party instruments and plugins, but point is, it's nice to have so much right at your fingertips. So that's going to wrap it up, guys. I hope I did this Keylab Mark II proper justice. I will obviously be sure to link these Keylab Mark IIs up in the description below for any of you who want to check one of these out for yourself. I know that I've only just begun to scratch the surface of what this thing is capable of. If you guys have any more questions, please be sure to leave them in the comments. I will do my best to get back to all of you. Thank you guys so much for liking and commenting and supporting the channel. Until next time, my name is Patrick, and I'll catch you all soon, all right? Peace.